Hey guys, this is Sourceful with Sourceful Journey. Um, welcome to my channel. Um, she uh, decided to do a bit of a reboot on this channel <coughs> because when I uh, initially started, it was more so dealing with uh, going through my journey in terms of my health and building towards the betterment of that. Um, once I've been through the surgeries, I actually stopped recording and left it alone. So it's just been sitting stagnant for a few months. Um, I decided to do a bit of a reboot. So I really wanted to be focused more on the, the spiritual journey uh, that a lot of us have been encountering over the past few years, and if not longer, depending on where you are in your journey. Um, so I really wanted to start this off by kind of giving you guys a bit of a backstory about my own journey and where I am in terms of all of that. So uh, yeah. Let's get started. So, I became aware of my um, my spiritual calling uh, much early on. Um, I could think back to the times of when you know I was much younger, like as a kid. Um, you know, I, I didn't really know then, but I knew I was a little different, like as far as like being along with certain other children and you know being more so to myself having to go into a particular special class because of it. Um, it's a wide array of things now that I think about it and think back to that like okay there was a reason why <laughs> I was in that type of predicament um, just because I was a little different. Um, <clears throat> when we get further along there was, one, there was one incident excuse me one incident when I remember uh, being in church one evening with my family and my mom was talking to one of the prophets that were there. Um, I remember walking over to them, just wanting to listen in to see what the ladies were talking about. And all of a sudden, the prophets that my mom was speaking to, she did this weird jolt with her body. And then she made a statement to me while my mom was standing there. It was like, um, you know, you have a big purpose uh, in your life that you need to take on at this time and basically tells me to not veer from it to stay on course with it um, and then she jolted back my mom at the time when she was telling me this and I'm not just paraphrasing but when she mentioned this I remember my mom grabbing me by the wrist and pulling me behind her <laughs> So that protective mom mode kicked in when she saw that. Um, and I was kind of taken aback by it. I didn't know what to think or how to react. Um, and then my mom, you know, ended the conversation, whatever conversation they had at that point, she ended it and pulled me right along with her and we walked out the door. Um, Needless to say, I don't think we even went back to that church after that, now that I think about it. I do recall that evening um, when we made it home, I went to speak to my mom, and I was crying. I was like, Ma, why me? I was like, I'm not ready for this. I don't want this. Um, you know, because being 17 years old, you just want to live life and enjoy what, you know, young kids enjoy. You know, you, wanna, you, know, you don't want no pressures or no huge responsibilities like that on your life. Um, and what she mentioned to me that evening was what let me realize I need to start taking it and being more serious about it. And what I mean by that, we to be more serious about it was more so um, not taking it lightly. So she said, well, you know, sourceful, I'm using sourceful for now, <laughs> um, you know, God tends to choose the ones that people would uh, not even think that he would, you know, choose to be the people to take on the task because um, he knows you through and through. He knows who you are as an individual and where your heart is. And that is why he chose you. When she said that, I... I didn't know how to respond. I felt like it was a blessing to hear it. But at the same time, I felt like I needed to rebel. So 
my way of rebelling at that time. I'm like, I was looking for ways to get God to choose someone else. <laughs> so I was like, I started drinking or finding, you know, place where I want to drink beer or, you know, coolers or whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, and I wasn't really rebelling, like extreme rebellion, but it was more so going against what my mother allowed in the household, which she did not allow any of that. And uh, I was just doing it in hopes that God would see it and choose someone else. That didn't work. It didn't work. There was no point. I should have known better. But then it's kind of like the saying, you live and you learn, right? I definitely lived and learned. So fast forward, 2020. My mom had passed away January of 2020. That was when the wait, well, I would say that's when the awakening truly intensified for me. And we'll talk more about that here. And what I mean by how the awakening truly intensified, um, signs and synchronicities and everything started to really ramp up heavily from that point onward. You know, certain chills you'll get on certain parts of your body or you'll feel like a certain uh, something like touching whether it's like touching your hair or your skin or even touching your ankle you, know, you, you feel that too in terms of the, um, the physical side of things those of us who are um, more uh, spiritually inclined you would know what I'm talking about um, it's more than just what we see with the physical eye, but it's with our other senses too. It really picks up heavily and you feel it. Um, also, if the temperature may change in a certain room, where the room might be set to be a certain temperature, but you may feel a completely different temperature in it. Good. Yeah. And what else? What else? What else? Other than dreams and the visions that do. Um, you might get a certain whiff of a, a perfume scent and maybe someone else sitting in the room with you and you're like did you smell that and they don't smell it like what are you talking about you don't smell that perfume no that happens a lot too um or if someone is just it seems to be aggravated with you just because of you being uh, a part of the 144 or chosen league. You might get people that just seem to be agitated by you. And part of the reason it's not you is because they're agitated with who they are as the individual and you're in some way revealing that to them. That's really the problem. But uh, I can talk about that another day. I see all that to say. The signs, synchronicities, and everything else, it truly intensifies like no other. And that's when I knew, okay, uh, this train is getting ready to roll. So, um, fast forward, I started noticing things um, around my space, um, like after my mother passed, even when it came to like animal totems, things like that, where there's butterflies of various colors, black, brown especially, white especially, feathers of all colors and sizes, birds, especially birds, I always love seeing birds, different types, I don't know, just something about them, um, what else, oh my gosh, so much, I remember I had this one dream, and I still haven't been able to find anything to explain to me why that happened, but it was like with this this snake it was like um like a teal it was like a teal blue or uh, some type of sparkling blue color snake somehow this is a very odd story but it went into my side and it, we'll have to talk about it another day yeah so the signs of synchronicities are intensified at times 10 when you're on this journey it really picks up you pick up everything from again signs of Synchronicities, scents, feeling uh, certain senses of uh, touch against your skin. You may feel like a brushing of something on your back, your ankles, 
your hair, like maybe your hairline, you can feel something. Um, your other areas too. But uh, yeah, your senses are truly how you are more sensitive to other things within your skin. Um, if you have cameras, you might notice some things on your camera. <laughs> I get that quite often on my cameras in my face. Um, it's a lot of things, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. Too much to name. But I say all that to say that was when I became aware of the fact that we're not alone and that this is a lot deeper than what we are used to seeing on the surface. This is a lot deeper than what we've been taught in um, various institutions. We'll put it that way. Yeah. And so next thing I want to talk about is when it comes to the area of love, because this is the part I struggle with the most. What I mean by that? Okay, so for me, I was just in a relationship and I just broke up earlier this year with someone that I was with for 14 years. 14. Good run. We had our happy moments. Just like any couple, you have your ups and your downs, more ups than downs. Thank goodness for that. Um, but uh, it was certain things that I was like enough was enough and I, I walked, walked away from it. But didn't think that during this awakening I was going to encounter this other situation. So there's this particular individual we're going to refer to him as John Smith. Okay, so I'll give you part of his name. <laughs> but uh, he's in the public eye quite heavily, and uh, he's seen everywhere for some reason. I'm always being showing signs and synchronicities that this is going to be the person I'm going to ultimately end up with. Part of what gets me is because this individual, him and I would be total opposites. I still can't wrap my mind around it. It's like I can't, but I can't because I was just in a relationship with someone where we were total opposites. You know, me being African American, him being Caucasian American. Our age, we had an age gap like no other. Maybe that's what what was so great about our dynamic and why we lasted as long as, I had, as we have, excuse me, was because of that. Maybe that was it. Um, but he was like, my ex was literally like a little bit over twice my age. <laughs> so it was what made me think, but whenever we were out, we always dress up. People loved it. Um, they, we, they loved it. They loved it. And uh, we complimented each other in that way. So, fast forward to this individual. He fits that same description to an extent, just like you said. So it would not be anything that I'm not privy to is something that I would be completely okay with. But the funny part about all of this is just with the signs and synchronicities, which I'm going to tell you about here in just a minute. Now with the signs and synchronicities, what's so funny is because every time I would try to question this uh, possibility, I'll say that. And maybe I shouldn't say that because then it's going to start to intensify. <sighs> every time I encounter this uh, reality, if you will, um, the signs and synchronicities kick up times 10. Times 10. Never fails. And then that's why I say, okay, sourceful, you're wrong. This is going to happen. And then that's when it kind of slows up a bit. But the next day or the following day, if I say, nope, it's not going to happen. Times 10. Whether it's on my uh, devices like on the internet or if it's on television or if it's when I'm out and about going to work you name it it's everywhere times 10 letting me know stop questioning 
this is what's going to happen. You need to accept it. I got to a point where I'm like, okay, okay, God, okay, source. I won't question it anymore. But then ego kicks in and then I want to question it. And then it's like, nope, no, you're not. And then here we are again. So, yeah, I've learned to accept it for what it is that this is just going to be the case. He's supposed to be the one I'm supposed to be with. Now, how is this going to happen? I don't know. But I know one thing. When it does, chances are I won't be able to talk about him any further. Because I would have to, you know, make sure that I remain about the whole situation. So, we talk a little bit about John Smith now. But at some point, I'm pretty sure I won't be able to speak on him any further. Um, and I'm okay with that. We can always talk about other topics then when that time comes. With that being said, uh, yeah, the love side of things is very interesting. So be interested to see how this pans out as well. And that is all for today's video. Definitely don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I really want to thank you guys for reaching out to me. I've gotten a lot of DMs over on Instagram, which is pretty amazing. Some of you guys are really creative. You found out where I was, uh, where I was on that uh, site. So uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool you guys sought me out and thank you for that. I do respond to messages. Rest assured in that, I am not one of those people that will just read it and leave you on red or whatever. But um, I do respond to all my followers. And uh, yeah, until the next video, you guys, I'm definitely sending love and light. And I'll talk to you soon.